the first effect of sin. Sin brings shame, and with shame comes guilt and fear. That's why the Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. Adam was afraid of God. Are you here with me tonight? You have no need to be afraid of God. What you should be afraid of is afraid of doing the wrong thing. Because it's by sinning that we die. But Adam placed the blame on God. He thought God was going to kill me. Have you ever done something wrong? I remember hearing about this young lady in college. She wrote home to her mother. She said, Mother, I want you to know that uh, two nights ago, I met a young man in college. He doesn't have a degree, he doesn't have a job, and he doesn't intend to get a job. And yesterday I got married to him. He's already beating me, but I'm going to stay with him because I love him. I'm going to drop out of school, and this is the last letter I'm writing to you and that. Before she closed it, she said, Mother, everything I just said was a lie. But I have two F's on my report card. <laughs> you know, when you're afraid of your parents, you do some crazy things. And sometimes we get so afraid of God that we forget that it's not God we should be afraid of. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. What book did I say? Verse 23, I have here in my Bible uh, uh, wages, not punishment. Somebody say wages. wages. Not punishment. Not punishment. Come on, say not punishment. Not punishment. Wages. wages. Not punishment. It says, for the wages of sin is? Bible doesn't say the punishment of sin is death. It's not God who's going to kill you. It's your sin that kills you. So when you sin, don't run away from God into more sin. As if God is the one who's going to kill you. Now that you sin, God is going to kill you. So when God comes down, he comes down to kill. That's what people think, right? See, John chapter 3 verse 17 says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Many people run away when they see the preacher coming. Come on now. They shut their door and they turn off their lights and they pretend as if they're not home. As if the preacher coming is a death sentence. But I want you to know you should be running away from your friends who caused you to sin. You should be running to the church. You should be running to Christ. You should be running to God because it is in Him that we experience eternal life. I want you to know that when God into the Garden of Eden, he didn't come down to kill Adam and Eve. Did God kill Adam and Eve? No. After they sinned, God came to make the situation better.
Sin is a slave driver. <coughs> See, many times we are unsaved because the devil imputes false and negative motives to God's action. And I want you to know that even when God shows up to punish, there is always somebody saved. Come on now, when he showed up at the Antediluvians in Noah's day and he said, I'm tired of these people and their sin. God is such a good God, he couldn't wipe them all completely. Amen? Amen. Noah and his family were saved and the fact is more people could have been saved but they ran. Be sure of. 
And it is only after ignoring the warnings for at least a year and a half that these buildings come up for a final vote of condemnation. Are you hearing me tonight? It reminds me of the parable where Jesus says one more year to the truth. Let, let's give it one more year. Are you hearing me? God comes down and inspects our lives to see if we're bearing fruit. And Jesus says they have nothing to show for your grace. But do God give them one more year. Just one more year. It's difficult to condemn something while there's still life in it. Amen? Amen. You know, even your old cell phones, they, they tell you, turn your old cell phones in. Anybody ever see them? See those bags that they mail to you? Tell you, drop the cell phones in it. Mail it off to some place, and you wonder to yourself, what on earth would they be doing with your old cell phones? Do you want me to tell you what they're doing with it? No. Your cell phone has certain metals on the inside that are very expensive. Copper, and platinum, and a few other things, some gold pieces. So, in this age that we're living in, people don't condemn things to the dogs. Because there's always something precious on the inside. Something that can be reused, something that has value in it. And that's what God is saying to us in John chapter 3, verse 17. When God sees darkness in the world, God does not say, I condemn you. I, I don't want to have anything to do with you. God brings light to the darkness. He says, you've got some gold on the inside. And I've come here to tell you, it doesn't matter what people tell you, there is still worth in it. They still got something on the inside because I placed it in them. They got my image on the inside that I want to reclaim. I will not allow them to be condemned. So tonight God is saying, tonight God is saying to you, will you accept my love? See, it's all about love. It's all about love. The love that God is giving you is not the feeling that you feel when you feel a feeling that you've never felt before. The love that God is giving you is not the motion in the ocean. The love that God is giving to you is not a, a love song. It's not words. The love that God is giving to you is not Silly nonsense to calculate it to make you lose your mind. The love that God has given you is not something that will make you blind to the faults in the person talking. The love that God has given to you is a love that will lengthen your life. Amen? It's a love that will take you up from an area of perishing. To eternal life. It's a love that will lighten your life. So that you can say, like Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 4, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Do you want to live that life tonight? Come on, George. Sing that song. 